Sloth checked his map by the light of the full moon. Yes, this has to be the place. Dragon Slayer's Academy. In truth, this is not what I expected, Wigloth muttered. Uck, yay, Daisy agreed. Wigloth and Daisy stood at the edge of a moat filled with greenish, foul-smelling water. It reminded Wigloth, in many ways, of Moena's cabbage soup. A rickety drawbridge led over the water to a gatehouse set in the middle of a broken-down castle wall. A tattered blue banner waved above the door. Bold letters on it spelled out DSA. Wigloff drew a deep breath and started across the drawbridge. Daisy trotted at his side. Wigloff pulled a chain by the gatehouse door. A bell sounded from deep within. After a time, the door cracked open. A short man with blue, big eyes stared at the travelers. He held a torch in one hand. Yes, he said. I am Wigloff, sir, Wigloff offered. I am here to study. Welcome to DSA, the man said, opening the door. Wigloff saw that he wore an apron. Odd time to arrive, midnight, the man went on, and school started two weeks ago. But no matter, first things first. He held out his hand. Seven pennies, please. Alas, Wigloff sighed, I have no pennies. The door began to close. Wait, sir, he called. I, I have half a cabbage dumpling. The door banged shut. I'm a willing worker, Wigloff added. I wash dishes, and the door opened a few inches. The man stuck his head out. You're a skilled at... You are skilled at washing dishes, he asked. Wigloff nodded, very skilled. Well, that suits me better than seven pennies any day. The man opened wide the door. Come in, come in, I'm Frypot, school cook and former dishwasher. Oh, I thank you, kind sir, Wigloff exclaimed. But say not a word of this to Headmaster Mordred, Frypot warned. He will put the thumb screws to me if he finds out. So on this page, we're introduced to one of the conflicts that Wigloff is facing in our story. Um, it says that he doesn't have the seven pennies that's required to join the academy here. Back on page 34, it says that he needs at least seven pennies, but he doesn't have that. So instead, he offers a couple of things. He offers half of his cabbage. He begged and pleaded to join the DSA, and he offered to wash dishes. So when he's faced with this external conflict of not having the seven pennies, he thinks, well, what do I have? What can I offer to be accepted into this? And he offers half his cabbage, he begged and pleaded, and he was offering to wash dishes. So I kind of want to stop for just a second and think, what does that tell us about Wigloff? Who is he on the inside? Because he's begging and because he is offering everything that he has, I'm thinking he is very desperate and determined to get into the DSA. Not a word, sir, Wigloff promised. Then he and Daisy started through the door. Hold up now, Frypot called. No pigs allowed. But sir, Wigloff began, this is no ordinary pig. Just listen. Daisy, say hello to the kind man. Hello, hey, Wypot Frey, Daisy said. Zounds, Frypot exclaimed, a pig that speaks pig Latin. Frypot knelt down next to Daisy. Hello, hey, Iggy Pay, he said slowly and loudly. Oh, I shall make you a comfy pallet in the hen house. Yes, just as soon as I sign in our new dishwasher, I mean student. Then Frypot lit the way through the gatehouse, across the castle yard, and up a stone stairway into a crumbling castle. Just inside the door, Frypot stuck his torch into a holder on the wall. Then he sat down at the desk and opened a thick book. Full name, he asked. Wigloff of Pinwick. Age? This shall be my twelfth summer. Skills? Washing dishes, began Wigloff. Slopping pigs, raking dung. I meant skills that might be useful in dragon slaying, Frypot said. Wigloff thought for a moment. Nothing comes to mind, he answered. Class one, then Frypot shut the door. He opened a cupboard and took out a blue tunic and helmet. White letters on the tunic spelled out DSA. He gave them to Wigloff. Your uniform, he said. The kitchen's that way, Frypot added, handing Wigloff the torch. You can start on the dishes while I settle your pig. Then the cook led Daisy towards the door. 
Um, K, Iggy Pay, he said, and tell me how you came by your enchantment. I never cook bacon, you know. Well, hardly ever. What a poor sword, Wigloff heard someone exclaim. He half opened one eye. He had not had much sleep. Frypot had not told him how very, very many dirty dishes there would be. Now Wigloff saw two boys in DSA tunic standing at the front of his cot. One was sandy-haired and plump. The other had straight brown hair and a serious face. He was holding Shurkill. Have you ever drawn this sword in battle? The boy asked. No, Wigloff answered. Have you ever sliced off anyone's head with it? So before we go on to the next page, there is an internal conflict that we see Wigloff facing uh, on page 39. He has to answer what kind of skills he possesses. When Frypot asks him, what skills do you have that are going to be beneficial to dragon slaying? He says, well, I don't really have any of those skills. So what does he do? He gives useless skills. He says, well, I wash dishes and I can slop pigs and I rake dung, but none of those pertain to dragon slaying. What does this tell us about Wigloff? I don't think he's ready for the DSA. He doesn't have any skills that are required of him to be a dragon slayer. So I just don't think he's quite ready to be one yet. Of course not, Wigloff exclaimed. And I'll wager you have never killed a dragon with it either. No, Wigloff admitted. But the sword is called Sure Kill, he added. So perhaps I shall. I'm called Wigloff. I'm Eric. The boy tossed Shurkill back into Wigloff's cot. I sleep there, he pointed to the far side of the room. Wigloff turned to see one of many lumpy cots just like his own. On the wall above it hung a certificate which read, Sir Lancelot Fan Club. Next to that hung a tapestry. It showed a knight plunging a sword into a dragon. Blood gushed from the dragon's side. Yuck, thought Wigloff. I have not yet killed a dragon, Eric was saying, but soon I shall, not for the gold, but to ride the world of evil. I want prey. Save it, Eric, the plump boy cut in, or we shall miss breakfast. He turned to Wigloff, adding, don't worry, we are not all so eager as Eric. Wigloff put on his DSA tunic and helmet and followed his roommates to a huge dining hall. Boys of all sizes sat at long wooden tables labeled Class 1, Class 2, and Class 3. A big boy was tossing slices of burnt toast through the air. Other boys punched and poked and pinched each other for the honor of catching them. The sight made Wigloff feel a little homesick. Wigloff got in line and picked up his tray. What's for breakfast? He asked Eric. Fried eel on toast, Eric replied as he took a heaping plateful. Eel? Wigloff cried. Eric nodded. Mordred said eating eel is, eel is part of our training, he explained. Dragon hunters must learn to live on what can be found near a dragon's lair. The boys carried their trays to the class one table. Then Wigloff watched as Eric scooped up a spoonful of greasy eel and eagerly stuffed it into his mouth. Ugh, Wigloff groaned. How do dragon hunters do it? The plump boy leaned over toward him. They don't, he whispered. Eels live in the castle moat, so they do not cost Mordred a cent. That is the real reason we are served eel so often. How often? Wigloff asked in dismay. Too often, the boy replied. By the way, I'm Agnes. Wigloff stared in awe. Agnes the adventure? Oh, he saw the notice. Agnes smiled shyly. Mordred only made me some fear made me sound fierce to attract fierce pupils to his school. Then you never killed a nest of dragon young? Wigloff asked. Not exactly, Agnes admitted. I stumbled over an old dragon nest in the forest once and squashed some rotten eggs. Phew, did they ever stink. He waved a hand in front of his nose. It took weeks to get that slimy goo off my boots. Then Tor Torblad the Terrible and Baldric the Bold, Wigloff began. Agnes shook his head. I'm afraid my Uncle Mordred sometimes stretches the truth. The headmaster is your uncle, Wigloff exclaimed. Imagine, so has everybody here ever, so has anybody here ever killed a dragon? Not yet, Eric piped up, but soon someone shall, and that someone shall be me. Clang, clang, a bell sounded, and Eric slurped up the tail of his eel. 
Finish up, Agnes advised Wigloff. Stalking a fire breather. Stalking a fire breather class begins in five minutes, and it is way over in the East Tower. Wigloff stared at his fried eel on toast, now cold and gray. Then he left it on the plate and hurried after Agnes and Eric. So that ends chapter four, but before we go, uh, I just want to go over one more thing on this page. We learn another conflict that Wigloff goes through at the end of this chapter. He learns the truth about his previous heroes of the Academy. So for after reading this, I'm kind of thinking to myself that he's been looking up to these people for a really long time. When he gets there, he is imagining all of these people who have killed all these dragons, and it's something he's aspiring to do himself. But then he learns the truth when Agnes admits that he never killed any dragons, neither has Torblad the Terrible and Baldric the Bold, and that kind of causes an internal conflict with Wigloff. Um, he, so what does he do? All of his dreams have just been crushed in his little mind. So what does he do? He thinks, well, what does this Tell us, what does Wigloff now have to understand about himself? And I want for you to be thinking about that as we go on and continue reading. Wigloff, I don't understand. Um, I think it might have broken. I don't know if it recorded the last minute. <laughs> oh, great, it did. <laughs> 